We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. I think uh, we, we have to, to, to wait for the other panelists. We have to, 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 to make the debate richer. So we have here uh, just uh, Mr. Mark Williams, Ms. John, Mr. Goran Marby. We are waiting uh, for just uh, for for all the for another panelist, we have the the representer of the the IGF. Uh, then they make a presentation. I will make them slowly. You have Madame Ariette Esterson. We are waiting for and uh, Madame uh, Kumbuzo uh, Chaveni, which is uh, the S South African Minister of Co Communication and technologies. Renata is still here, is, the, is yet. Uh, so we have to talk a lot with Renata about education and uh, <laughs> rights. And uh, you are waiting for Mr. André Xurep for Malta, from Malta, which is his uh, uh, professor uh, of in the University of Malta of quantum physics, physician. We have also Mr. Goran, who is uh, representing the Corporation for Assigned Danes, which is ICANN, Mr. Marby. And we have, uh, we're still waiting for uh, Mario Simoli, uh, United Nations, who is representing uh, the CEPALC, so the, the Commission, the Economic Commission of uh, Latin America and Caraibe. And we have just, uh, we, we will, we will, we will wait for the other panelists. We will talk a lot about uh, internet governance and how government is dealing with um, when we talk about uh, about uh, digital economy, which is uh, not an equal access for all the people. You know that. And uh, as uh, we have many economists as uh, uh, dealing with our debate, so the, I think the, 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 economic, the, the economical uh, aspect will, uh, will uh, be the, the core of our uh, statement, maybe. Samira, sorry to interrupt you, it's Henriette here. Just to tell Bonjour. you that you have two panelists who are here in the room. We are sitting oh, okay, on the stage. Nice. Okay, thank you. Now we I'm can see you. Somebody was waiting. Okay, okay. On site. You have yes. them on site. Okay. We are here yes, on site. Thank you. So we have uh, Madame Ariette and Mr. Simoli, I think. Uh, no, uh, Andre Schwierp. So, so? Andre Schwierp. Ah, okay. Very welcome. So the other <laughs> thank you. Andre Xurev, which is from Malta. Okay, Precisely. so we have uh, we are uh, we are we have just one panelist, which is from uh, the Minister of Communication uh, of some South Africa. I said I thought she was scheduled in the, the panel. So if you want us to to begin, of waiting from someone, all people online is here. We have John Fry, Goran Marby from Nikan, John Fry. We have uh, Mark Williams for the World Bank. And Renata, which is a um, lawyer, international lawyer in human rights, and uh, Mr. Uh, Frank, uh, which is uh, representing uh, the United Nations, I think, uh, is an economist too, uh, uh, and a graduate in economist. So um, we're waiting for one, one guest, I think, one panelist, or um, go ahead. I, th I think you can go ahead. There's no one joining us here. So yeah, we should go ahead. Okay, because, because they sent me the, the program. Each. Okay. So um, hi, everybody. Uh, I would like to welcome to all of our panelists. 
Et je voudrais souhaiter, euh, comme je vais m'exprimer en français, je suis désolée pour M. Goran Marbi, mais j'essaierai de traduire au fur et à mesure. Vous avez des traducteurs normalement. S'il y a un problème, j'essaierai de traduire. I will translate for you. So, euh, je voudrais souhaiter la bienvenue à tous les participants, à tous les participants à ce panel de haut niveau. Euh, pendant près d'une heure, nous allons essayer d'échanger, de débattre autour de la question de la gouvernance d'Internet plus particulièrement et sur une thématique euh, d'actualité. Une thématique donc euh, euh, avec nos panélistes, des experts de haut niveau, euh, qui, qui, dont deux panélistes qui sont déjà sur place à Katwitz, donc euh, euh, la représentante de la Madame, euh, Madame, euh, Madame Ariette euh, de l'Afrique du Sud, et euh, Monsieur Greb, qui est de, 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 de représentant, donc physicien, euh, physicien et représentant euh, pour l'Université de Malte. Donc, euh, je vais essayer d'introduire, de, de, avant de, de, de présenter tous les panélistes de façon euh, plus précise et, et, et plus conséquente, je vais essayer tout de même d'introduire un peu la thématique. Donc, on va parler euh, « Which middle uh, governance models to promote inclusive and diverse business development ?» What stands in the way? Donc, uh, what stands in the way? Quels sont les obstacles précisément à ce modèle de gouvernance que nous devons promouvoir? Uh, which have to promote this model of uh, development, which will be inclusive and diverse, which is equally uh, make uh, technology ac uh, accessibility for all the people from the south and from the north of. Um, our internet uh, world. So, dans un environnement, je vais essayer de faire ma, une petite introduction pour situer un peu uh, ce débat de haut niveau qui concerne donc uh, uh, ce, cette économie digitale qui marque un peu uh, notre époque. Uh, nous sommes, il faut le reconnaître, dans un environnement, uh, chers panélistes, uh, globalisé et digitalisé. Et donc, euh, du saut de cette digitalisation des moyens de production, des moyens de, 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 moyens de travail, les facteurs de production eux-mêmes, nous parlons désormais de l'âge, du quatrième âge de la révolution industrielle, puisque nous y sommes, nous y sommes de plein pied. La révolution industrielle est bien belle une réalité. Seulement voilà, euh, toutes ces technologies, nous sommes au beau milieu d'une ère de digitalisation avec ce rapport quasi addictif que nous entretenons désormais à l'égard de la connectivité. Aujourd'hui, dans ce monde hyper connecté, la moitié des emplois actuels verront leur, leur travail, leurs tâches, disons leur poste de travail, complètement évoluer en raison d'Internet et on n'y échappe pas. Nous l'avons vu un peu avec la crise sanitaire de la pandémie de de, de la Covid-19, combien il était important pour nous euh, de, 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 de goûter au plaisir, je vais dire, on va dire, de, du télétravail. Mais pas seulement ceci, il y a aussi euh, l'évocation euh, de cette mutation digitale du monde du travail. Et je vais insister sur cet aspect, puisque le monde du travail à venir, sans interroger, quels seront à l'avenir les emplois euh, dont auront besoin nos entreprises dans ce monde, de, dans cette économie numérique, euh, dans cinq ans, dans une décennie à l'orée de 2030 ou de 2050, euh, tous, face à tous ces bouleversements numériques, je vais inviter les panélistes euh, à, à se présenter et à, donc, à développer la réflexion ensemble sur euh, l'importance euh, de l'accès équitable à, au monde de, de, de la digitalisation, sachant très bien que ça, euh, face à ces bouleversements justement euh, numériques, c'est au gouvernement qu'il incombe euh, prioritairement la responsabilité euh, d'assurer la qualité d'abord de l'éducation, parce que l'éducation est aussi un moyen où nous donnons accès à d'autres populations euh, aux apprentissages des connaissances. C'est une chose très importante. Nous sommes dans l'économie du savoir et l'économie numérique. Sans oublier la formation continue euh, tout au long de la vie du salarié, des salariés que nous sommes pour certains, qu'il est très important euh, donc de, 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 de goûter aux vertus, on va dire, euh, de, aux vertus de la technologie euh, et, et, et surtout de savoir que notre travail aujourd'hui ne peut plus être possible, peut-être être dans un monde autre possible sans Internet. On parle d'intelligence artificielle, de transition digitale, c'est un peu rentré aussi dans, le, dans les mœurs et dans les, le, euh, 
dans le champ sémantique de, de, des médias aujourd'hui. On parle de systèmes d'automation, de télétravail, de plateformes numériques, de contenu numérique, de cybersécurité aussi. On y reviendra. Toute l'importance que ce nouveau monde, donc ce monde de, de, de digitalisation, euh, représente à nos yeux en tant qu'expert, mais aussi en tant qu'économiste, en tant que de, 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 de spécialiste et expert en, en, dans, le, dans, dans le droit juridique numérique, comme Madame Renata, euh, et dans tout le système de régulation et de bonne gouvernance. Donc, face à l'explosion de ces technologies perçues comme le sésame d'avenir, il faut le reconnaître, d'un avenir plus radieux pour le marché mondial du travail, pour la croissance mondiale, en nous vend du, du, du coup, on sait très très bien que chaque entreprise en pleine crise de Covid a pu, grâce aux technologies numériques, échapper un peu dans leur activité à, 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 ce, à ce mauvais passage de l'inactivité, de l'inaction, de l'immobilisme où tout le monde était condamné à être confiné. Je crois qu'un peu cette crise de la Covid nous a un peu aussi a été un peu une démonstration très forte de ce qu'est aujourd'hui l'économie numérique. Mais également, nous ne pouvons pas aborder la question de, de l'économie numérique sans parler d'égalité d'accès à ces technologies, de connaissances, du savoir généralisé, de la démocratisation d'Internet, mais également et surtout, quelles sont les politiques publiques de gouvernement que les gouvernements sont tenus, eux, de mettre en place pour amorcer ce virage de l'économie numérique et baliser euh, le terrain à tous les acteurs du numérique, à savoir euh, baliser le terrain pour notre jeunesse, très 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 euh, addict, on va dire, à, à tout ce qui est Internet, euh, nos étudiants, nos apprenants, nos universités, les employés des entreprises, les citoyens libres qui, qui ont cette liberté d'accéder à l'information de façon transparente lorsque cette information émane des pouvoirs publics. Donc, euh, tout, tout, ce, tout, tout ce beau monde, tous ces acteurs de, de, des technologies de l'information et de la communication ont vu de développer un monde meilleur, plus équitable en termes d'accès aux compétences numériques. Donc, alors, tout après toute euh, cette proposition, nous reviendrons sur les questions. Je vais essayer même si je n'étais pas très, très, très brève, euh, de présenter les intervenants, euh, des, des intervenants de grande qualité scientifique, euh, des panélistes, hommes et femmes, issus du monde des technologies numériques, de l'économie, euh, des physiciens, mais également euh, des juristes, de, de, des avocats internationaux et surtout des acteurs très en vue du monde de ce qu'on appelle aujourd'hui la digitalisation. Donc, je suis ravie de vous présenter euh, nos honorables intervenants à ce panel IGF, donc euh, Internet Governance Forum. Euh, je, vais, euh, je sais très, très bien que je vais commencer d'abord euh, par Madame euh, Henriette esther Susan qui est sur euh, le site. Donc, euh, euh, j'aimerais bien que, euh, que la caméra euh, soit dirigée quand même. On va, on va essayer de chaque fois de faire le tour, de présenter un peu de manière très très succincte. Nous avons euh, donc la présidente du groupe consultatif multipartite qui est déjà à Katwitz, donc euh, l'AGF avec qui, le Forum pour la gouvernance de l'Internet. L'AGF qui comprend, je vous le rappelle, 50 membres ici du gouvernement, du secteur privé et de la société civile, dont des représentants des communautés universitaires et techniques. Euh, actuel, euh, Madame euh, Estersen est actuellement membre de la Commission mondiale sur la stabilité euh, du cyberspace et qui continue à travailler dans tout ce qui est réseau d'Internet, progrès des communications et surtout le rôle de la société civile dans cet accès équitable au monde des technologies. Euh, nous avons également Madame Renata Avila qui est en ligne. Madame Renata Avila qui est euh, donc euh, une, Avila, euh, CEO Open Knowledge Foundation, qui vous possédez une fondation qui s'intéresse beaucoup euh, aux droits de l'homme, ce qu'on appelle les droits numériques, et donc vous êtes avocat international des droits de l'homme, et on sait l'importance euh, de ce qu'on appelle les Open Gov, l'accès libre et transparent aux informations des décideurs politiques pour qu'il y ait cette vraie démocratisation d'Internet. Euh, bonjour Madame Renata, bonjour. Euh, nous avons en salle toujours donc euh, mon monsieur d'abord, monsieur Goran euh, Marby, qui est suédois, monsieur Goran Marby, Corporation for Assigned Names and uh, Numbers, société, qui est l'ICAN. Bonjour, monsieur Goran. 
Alors, euh, Monsieur Goran est en ligne. I'm here. Hello. So, <laughs> hello, Mr. Goran. I'm happy to, to have you with us. Uh, sorry for uh, speaking in French because it's not scheduled for uh, just speaking French. If I knew it, I will uh, prepare my presentation in English. So uh, I think uh, no, uh, don't mind for that. We, we can, you can make your intervention in English and we'll translate lately. Uh, Mr. Goran, donc, uh, you represent the ICANN, which is uh, le, the, the corporation assigned names, ce qu'on appelle les fameux noms de domaine, which is important for us. It's our uh, Uh, our address, c'est le nom de domaine, des numéros sur Internet, c'est comme ça que nous pouvons accéder uh, de façon automatique avec cette intelligence technologique. Uh, et vous étiez, je vous rappelle, Monsieur Goran, uh, vous avez à votre actif une expérience de 20 ans dans le domaine du secteur de l'Internet. Vous avez été aussi um, à la tête de la haute autorité suédoise indépendante de régulation des postes et des télécommunications. Bienvenue, Monsieur Goran. Et nous avons aussi euh, Monsieur sur le site donc. Hello. Monsieur, oui, pardon, Monsieur John Frank, j'y arrive. Uh, John Frank est vice-président United Affairs Microsoft. Vous êtes le vice-président des affaires des Nations Unies de Microsoft. Vous dirigez les équipes des affaires gouvernementales des Microsoft à Bruxelles et dans les capitales européennes. Et on sait que, bon, je ne voudrais pas faire de la publicité pour Microsoft, mais Microsoft est très présent dans l'univers de nos usages technologiques et quotidiennement dans les solutions du télétravail et de toutes sortes d'applications, des applications technologiques. C'est un outil fondamental dont l'usage est très important parce que lorsqu'on parle d'Internet, on parle aussi d'usage, de quotidienneté, de familiarisation avec ces technologies au quotidien. Euh, bienvenue, M. John Frank. Heureuse de vous avoir, très ravi de vous avoir avec nous. Hello. Euh, vous, nous avons Mark Williams. Uh, Mark Williams. Hello. Thank you. Il y a un petit décalage, je pense, au niveau de la voix. Vous, tout le monde est là, donc on est, on est tous là. Alors, euh, alors, nous avons deux panélistes donc on site et euh, quatre panélistes en ligne. Euh, avant d'aborder les questions qui vont être au débat, je vais, je vais essayer très bref. Avec Marc Williams, vous êtes donc le digital développement, le monsieur digital et développement global des connaissances et du, du, tout ce qui est digital euh, dans, à la Banque mondiale. Donc, vous êtes un peu l'analyste, l'observateur averti de ce monde digital. Marc Williams, vous êtes directeur exécutif en connaissance et expertise mondiale en développement numérique. Et surtout, vous êtes économiste avec plus de, de, de 20 ans. De, 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 de ce qu'on appelle travail de réglementation dans le secteur numérique et qui couvre un, un éventail de domaines spécialisés, la stratégie, la réglementation, c'est ce qu'on va, et puisqu'on va en parler, la réglementation, c'est la gouvernance. Et voilà, donc euh, je vais adresser, on va rentrer maintenant dans le vif du débat, j'espère ne pas avoir été très longue quand même, mais je voulais qu'il y ait une, euh, une contextualisation de ces débats très très importants autour de l'importance aujourd'hui de l'économie numérique et surtout euh, de, de cette diversification et cette vision inclusive du monde d'Internet aujourd'hui, Internet qui l'on espère euh, un de ses principaux objectifs est de démocratiser l'accès à tous les peuples du monde pour que ces connaissances soient partagées, ces outils technologiques soient partagés pour un meilleur être dans le monde du travail, mais également dans le monde de, de, de l'éducation. Alors, euh, je vais commencer euh, à céder la parole. Euh, premièrement, d'abord, euh, après avoir introduit tous les panélistes, euh, à céder la parole à, à, à Madame... Euh, Renata, euh, qui va nous parler donc euh, de l'importance de ces droits numériques. Et tour à tour, c'est la question que je vais poser. Euh, je vais solliciter euh, l'interaction, c'est-à-dire euh, euh, on va tous interagir avec tous les panélistes euh, volontairement. Ça veut dire la question sera posée à tout le monde, mais je vais commencer parce que je pense que les droits numériques sont un des volets importants euh, de, de cette économie numérique dans l'aspect de, de, de ce libre accès à, à l'Internet. Alors, euh, 
ma question, ça, ça, je ne vais pas dresser en première et nata, mais elle, elle s'impose, donc elle va être posée à tout le monde. Comment faire en sorte aujourd'hui, euh, euh, vous qui êtes spécialiste nata du droit euh, euh, numérique, euh, comment faire en sorte que personne ne soit laissé justement pour compte dans l'économie émergente, dans l'économie numérique émergente aujourd'hui Comment allons-nous faire est-ce que c'est viable? La parole est à vous, Renata. Uh, dear high level panel, uh, dear Samira, uh, I, I will uh, start with a provocation, basically. Over the last 20 years, we have a focus on inclusion and access from a very paternalistic way, I think. And something that we have neglected is to unlock the creative power of everyone. And as a result, we have today all the power, all the technological power concentrated in few companies, concentrated in few people, basically creating the technology that everybody is using. That is not inclusive. And that failed, super centralized, super homogeneous way of producing technology is creating a lot of problems beyond just the inclusion problems. So my proposal, and, and, uh, and the effort that we need to like, uh, be very like, you know, like understanding that it will not be, it's not a quick fix. It's not something that will happen overnight, but it's a necessary investment. It, it is not only a, a, a very hard task at the regulatory sphere, at, at the uh, lawmaking sphere, but also it, uh, it has to like, you, you know, we have to open the wallet. We have to open the pocket to invest in the following. We need to invest in equal access to creation. We need to invest in equal access and part participation in the creation of the industries of the future. Because basically, and I have, I have experienced it myself, you know, like, and I, I'm considering myself a very privileged uh, woman, even if I come from the global south. I, I, the frustration of not being able to for example, provide services locally, even if you have all the skills, even if you have uh, the specific ideas on how to solve the uh, problem that technology is intending to solve. What happens is basically that we leave everything to the market and the market is distorted at the moment. The market has very powerful players that can you know, offer the cheapest price or often to many countries they, they offer like the technological infrastructures for free. And the small companies or the small group of public interest technology and creation that are struggling, you know, like they're struggling and trying to serve their people, the people that they have closer to them are left out because they cannot compete on price. But price is the, the least inclusive criteria to choose the technologies that specifically the public sector is going to use. Similarly, when we look at education and the way that we are educating the kids of tomorrow is basically we are educating with all the curricula is structured to be passive recipients and users instead of, and, and okay, there's a, have been like a lot of progress in uh, safety and security, but not in, in creation. Like basically we offer a limited number, a limited menu of tools that they need to learn how to use, but they are not learning. They are not gaining the skills to imagine different tools or to, and to imagine or to be critical about, about the technology that they're using. They're imposed on the cloud, sitting in front of a computer all the time. And yet that computer that they have in front of them is not enabling creation. And if they create, they create in closed platforms that take all the products of the creation for them. So the, the opening opportunities from the very early age, from the local, from the local, for uh, uh, people to, have an, uh, uh, to be participants in making digital, in making this digital culture, it is not only uh, going to help diversity, it's also going to help the environment, it's also going to serve people better. Because if you have the people that you're in intending to serve with whatever technology solution that we are, you're developing, whatever business you're doing, if they're so far from you, if they're so removed from you, you don't see them. You, if you don't see them, you they're don't They're invisible. 
Sorry, Mrs. Exactly. Brenda, or each of you have two minutes of intervention. Okay. So, so uh, thank, thank you me. very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, um, I noticed that uh, your your uh, statement is uh, perfect. You are going to 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 to, to, the, the, to ask the same question. You ask. You say, uh, Mrs. Brenda, say uh, the l'économie numérique n'est pas inclusive. Elle est centralisée. Elle est au contraire exclusive. Uh, uh, Mr. John Frank, la parole est à vous. How do you react? Is this for about the same question? Thank you. Well, I think that you know technology has become such an important part of our economy and our daily lives that it's important to ask questions about you know does the technology that we're using and creating reflect the values of our society and and ourselves personally? And I think that um, you know governments need to ensure as regulators that there's appropriate regulation so that technology does match the values of society um, and that we can feel comfortable about it. I mean, the, the range of technologies is, is, is expanding and huge. So, you know, there's so many different aspects um, and you know, our economy is going this decade will go from the ICT sector, the global economy will grow from 5% to 10%. Uh, it's a huge expansion of technology in our global economy. And not only that, but every aspect of our lives is having more in technology infused in it. And so the you referred, Samira, to the um, fourth industrial revolution. Uh, industry certainly is being transformed, um, you know, but but non-industrial aspects of the economy are also being transformed, uh, whether it's agriculture or life sciences um, or education and government services. So we're, we're seeing this transformation and it is important that we know that the values that we set out uh, are reflected. And so certainly with artificial intelligence as an example, we've, we've had lots of good discussions about what are the principles to ensure that artificial intelligence is being used in ways that we can feel good about and comfortable about. And I, I think that that process can be broadly repeated. I do think it's important though, to think about how we can use government regulation to increase uh, access to the internet. Um, following up on you know, the Secretary General's roadmap um, for, digital trend, you know, for digital inclusion, we need to find ways to connect more people. I think that the, the past two years have demonstrated clearly to everybody that it's so essential to have con more connections. The number of people being connected is increasing, but I don't think we're doing it fast enough or that the quality and intensity of usage is good enough. So I think that we need a broader framework when we think about connectivity projects to, to focus on people and put people at the center and say, are we thinking about the affordability of access and devices from the outset? Are we thinking about the digital skills needed? Are we thinking about the government services, education, healthcare, et cetera, that we're gonna provide with these new services? And do we have a human rights framework to ensure that it's used to enhance humans' uh, capabilities and not suppress them? So I think that we need a broader framework to go forward, governments need to make sure that they're opening up frequency. Uh, you know, the spectrum allocation is important, that they look at their tax situation, and they look at ways, how can we partner with private sector and NGOs to create more multi-stakeholder solutions that will bring connectivity to more people? Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. John Frank. So uh, you, you, you think, vous pensez, vous considérez que les gens ne sont pas les gens, uh, uh, la connexion est un droit pour tous, mais les gens ne sont pas assez connectés parce qu'il y a aussi un problème d'infrastructure et un problème aussi qu'il faut régler avec les États. Nous allons uh, revenir en, en site avec uh, uh, Madame uh, Renata uh, Erpissen, qui représente l'IGF. 
à qui nous adressons la même question pour essayer de... Euh, alors, euh, Madame euh, euh, Renat, euh, toujours autour de la même question, euh, comment permettre euh, on-site euh, si, si... Donc, euh, j'imagine que, que, que le débat continue euh, autour de, 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 de la façon de démocratiser euh, cet accès équitable en pensant à créer les outils accessibles à tous, sachant très bien l'aspect aussi créatif pour les jeunes, pour les universitaires de l'Internet. Euh, comment faire en sorte, la question est aussi adressée, puisque je suis, je suis, je suis obligée de donner une intervention de deux minutes à chaque panéliste. Euh, Madame Renat, euh, comment faire en sorte de ne pas laisser, euh, les laisser pour compte de, de ce qu'on appelle cette économie numérique Comment faire en sorte pour que cet accès soit inclusif et non, euh, et non exclusif ou, ou, mm -hmm. ou vraiment, euh, comme l'a évoqué Mme Renata ou M. John Frank, euh, euh, rendre cet outil beaucoup plus créatif et pour, beaucoup plus euh, accessible en impliquant les gouvernements euh, dans ce process. La thank parole you, est à vous. Thank you, Samira. Um, and um, Henriette here, everyone, um, for the record. Um, I think we cannot uh, address inclusion without confronting exclusion. And we have to acknowledge that the world is unequal and that there's social and economic inequality which lies at the root of digital inequality. That does not mean that we cannot do a lot to confront the access divide, but fundamentally, if we don't confront poverty, gender inequality, discrimination based on so many other bases, primarily uh, on, on an economic basis, we're not going to bridge that digital divide. But then to respond to the topic of regulation, I think we, and I say this, we in a, in a royal sense, I mean here governments, businesses, uh, regulators, we need to remember that the role of policy and regulation is first and foremost to enable not to control, and to approach it from that paradigm of, of enabling access, enabling innovation, en enabling diversity of business models. So I think that's very important. And I think when we talk about the big internet companies, which are a real concern, let's remember that they are not the internet, and that regulating in a pro-competitive way, regulating so that markets are open and accessible, um, does not involve regulating the internet. It involves regulating markets. So let's remember that. I think the internet is the internet. It's public. It should be a common good and governed as such. That does not mean that we do not need to look at fair taxation and, and pro-competitive um, policy and regulation. So Samira, you know, that's my very short intervention. And I think, um, but ultimately I do want to emphasize that, that much as we can work as a global internet community to address the digital divide, the underlying divide of social and economic inequality is, is, should be our overall goal. Thank you, Mr. Rivat. Um, um, very interesting. Your uh, your uh, your uh, the aspect you 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 are uh, trying to develop because um, when you talk about regulation, just uh, for uh, to, to to be in the same idea uh, uh, that uh, we have to redefine in uh, une manière de repenser un peu l'usage d'Internet parce qu'il y a un aspect, c'est la protection des données dont les mes utilisateurs d'Internet sont à l'origine, il y a la, la problématique de comment protéger ces données tout en ayant un accès à Internet. Avant d'aborder cette question, vous avez aussi insisté sur l'aspect euh, globalisation des marchés. Justement, avec la pandémie de la COVID-19, nous avons vu euh, que de toutes les façons, euh, nous sommes dans une une ère dans une époque de post-globalisation où, 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 où on lorsqu'on vantait l'économie du marché, on s'est rendu compte aussi que cette économie de marché ne permet pas euh, de, 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 comment de, de partager de façon équitable cet accès euh, des peuples encore euh, qui sont soit soumis à la pauvreté, soit soumis euh, à, à, à une problématique d'éducation, soit soumis à l'inégalité entre hommes et femmes, puisque certaines femmes n'ont pas forcément accès euh, au numérique aussi, ça c'est une autre problématique. Euh, je voudrais enchaîner toujours autour, avant de, 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 
de passer à la question de la, de la réglementation pour ne pas perdre du temps avec euh, M. Marc Williams de la Banque mondiale euh, qui va nous donner ses impressions. Donc, euh, est-ce que nous sommes dans une ère tout de même de post-globalisation aujourd'hui de l'économie Il va falloir repenser un peu l'éducation, l'accès à Internet, euh, le, le, la façon de, de, de partager la connaissance, les connaissances scientifiques, technologiques dans le monde aujourd'hui Samira, I just want to ask you to slow down a little bit. The interpreters are struggling a little bit to, okay. to translate okay. sorry. what you sorry. are saying. So if you can just, when you're speaking in French, just to slow down a little bit. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So uh, my question, uh, my question is no. addressed to Mr. Mark William. I don't know, I'm going to go slowly for the truth. I'm the truth. Euh, donc, euh, est-ce qu'il faut repenser, justement, euh, il faut repenser non, la politique globale de l'économie Voilà, vous avez compris. Donc, nous sommes dans une ère post-globalisation où l'économie, on, on a vu que l'ère heureuse de l'économie globale a donné quelques limites, justement, à, 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 ce, à cette ère heureuse, puisque euh, il y a euh, une, une, injuste, disons, une inéquité de fait euh, par rapport à l'accès euh, aux avantages d'Internet économiquement pour le monde du travail et dans le monde de l'éducation en général et des connaissances. Ma, ma question s'adresse euh, au représentant de la Banque mondiale, M. Marc Pugliel. Toujours dans, la, dans le même esprit de la question, on est toujours dans la première partie du débat. Thank you. So, this question about inequality and the structural inequalities that have been demonstrated by the COVID pandemic. I think we need to look at two sides of this. First side is the COVID pandemic demonstrated the clear power of digital in terms of service delivery and ability to continue uh, uh, functioning within an in economy uh, and, it, it ordered, and continue receiving public services like education. So that's on the one hand, but on the other hand, it also created the complete shift to online, created um, clear visibility of the problems for people who don't have access to, that, to, to those services, who don't have access to online. So on the one hand, it's created opportunities, but it's also created new forms of exclusion. And I think that has highlighted the importance of an inclusive um, access to the internet. And from the World Bank's perspective, we look at this from an ecosystem point of view. So it's not, um, it's not sufficient to look at just one particular aspect of this. And several people, my fellow panelists have mentioned individual uh, aspects of the digital inclusion challenge, but we need to take a, a holistic view of it. Now, starting at the bottom, we've got the foundations around infrastructure, devices, um, ability to use and access um, the internet via those devices, but then also availability of services put online, accessible, um, you know, providing access to those services in languages and in a format which people can readily use. And then also complementary digital systems like digital ID, which gives people act, um, secure access to uh, those public services and private services as well, where it's integrated into the private sector. And, and also things like digital skills and, and um, areas, sort of software areas like that. All of those need to be taken to get addressed together if you're going to create holistic um, uh, access to avoid the exclusion of significant sections of the population in developing countries. Thank you, Mr. Mark Williams. Um, uh, on va continuer avec la première partie, mais on va faire un peu vite parce que je crois que uh, la question de la réglementation s'impose. Uh, Monsieur Goran Marbi, vous voulez réagir par rapport à ce qui a été dit jusqu'ici autour de, uh, de, de les opportunités que pourrait offrir l'économie numérique aujourd'hui et les problèmes uh, de la post-globalisation aujourd'hui en tant que représentante de l'ICAN. In two minutes? Yes. That's a challenge. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank and congratulate the Polish government that despite the, the sort of hardship uh, to set up this meeting, um, and we are learning a lot and, and we are very respectful uh, of what you're doing. So from, the, from my perspective, a big thank you for, for setting this up and all the participants that went there. I, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to change well, I'm going to come into the subject a little bit differently by saying that if I have a title for this uh, short speech is that the road to hell is paid with good intentions. Um, I represent and I'm part of a technical community that actually makes the internet possible here. 
For the last 35 years, we've been able to make sure that the internet is accessible in all parts of the world by pro providing the sort of identifiers that enable us a common interoperable internet. That means that everybody in the world can go on one uh, network and reach a computer, a mobile device, or anything else on the world. Well, you never hear, hear about us, you never think about us, and that's the whole intent. But every time you go online, you, you actually meet us technically. Uh, we provide that service through with no charge to any of you. And we do that for what we call the multi-stakeholder model. It's built by internet users, for internet users, together with internet users in all our different settings. We have been able to do this without regulation, without laws. And I think that has been the success of the internet. Because if it would have been a committee who built it up, it wouldn't have worked. We have no interest in the content. We don't put ourselves into the politics. But I'm grateful for all the thousands of people from hundreds of countries engaged so much in making sure that the internet just technically basically works. Over the last couple of years, we've seen um, a negativism about the internet itself. It was sort of wake up. I woke up like one day in 2016 and realized that a lot of the positive things about the internet suddenly wasn't there. There was much more about what's happened on top of the internet, on platforms, on, on applications and other ones. Uh, but, and, and that has drifted also about the discussion about the internet. Unfortunately, today we see regulations, uh, proposals for regulations that actually disconnect users from, from the internet. And we're not talking about authoritarian regimes, we're talking about uh, countries that are actually friends to the internet. That because they're looking into solutions on, on what happens on platforms, they, they, because of the legislation, actually can enter a situation where you can't use the internet at all. And I think that's scary. I think that some of the discussions that is happening right now, you have to make a difference between the, the foundational functionality of the internet that makes it work, it makes it actually to exist in one big operational network or thousands of networks speaking the same language. And what happens on top of the network or actually outside. Every time you go into a platform, you actually do leave the internet. You go into someone else's computer. And sometimes we from the industry have caused problems with words we're using. Words like cloud, and, and cloud could actually be a computer in your neighbor's garage. There is no cyber, there's no information that drifts around in cyberspace. All of that belongs to a computer somewhere in some jurisdiction. So I just want to caution legislators and other ones to really make a difference between the function of the internet, the, the technical function of the internet, which we provide from ICANN together with our friends in the RERs, the numbers community, the routes over operators and ITF where you have so many people who volunteer their time and effort on their free time to make sure there is a function of internet for all of you. So when it comes to regulation, because of, of help me and help everybody else to train, to help regulators and legislators around the world how the internet actually works. Because internet is like democracy. If we don't take care of it, if we don't, if we don't remember how it's working, there's a big chance for losing it. And right now, I think we all have to join the fight to preserve the interoperability of the internet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goran. You are talking about a, a, a sensible question, which is internet is like democracy. When you don't use it even, you, you can't practice it. So you, you can't talk about uh, to, to make sure that users of internet are equally, have the equal uh, access to, um, to infrastructure of internet, which it can plays a big, 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 uh, a big, um, role in this uh, field. So we go on, on the on site with uh, Mr. Um, from uh, Malta, or our physician, Mr. Zuerk, uh, 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 to ask him the question that makes our debate link it. Uh, all people are here talking about uh, reglementation, uh, the challenge that I uh, think we need to be uh, tackled through new rules of regulation. Uh, perhaps uh, in French, I will ask my question. Uh, um, y a-t-il des défis qui, selon vous, doivent être relevés par le biais de nouvelles règles euh, réglementaires de l'Internet Comment doit-on réguler Quel type de gouvernance imprimer pour que ce débat-là, euh, jaillisse de ce débat-là, euh, de vraies recommandations La parole est à vous, M. Exubert. Je vous aurais. 
Um, thank you so much, and uh, it's been it's been a very interesting um, it's very very interesting hearing the, uh, the my fellow panelists uh, discuss. And and at the outset, I just want to say that um, uh, Renata scooped me because uh, <laughs> the point I was I was I was going to start making was exactly sort of this distinction between uh, using and 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 developing or creating. Uh, but but I think it's worth it's worth reiterating and and. Um, as I said yesterday in another panel, I'm not a politician. I have no shareholders, so I'm allowed to say I don't know how how to how to fully address this question. But but let let me let me just uh, let me just uh, sort of say a few words. Um, uh, equal access for. for no, and first and foremost, uh, is not just equal access to to knowledge and the information, and, and equal access to using that information. I agree with Renata 100%, uh, even more than 100%, if, if that could be possible, uh, that we also need equal access to development, equal access to creativity, and and I think this is where perhaps uh, regulation could 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 help us uh, help us step in the right direction, and of course. Um, it's not clear <laughs> exactly how to how to do this, but you know, I, I could I could just take a couple of examples. So um, one of the more contentious things going on right now at the at the, the, the European level is we're working on ways in which we can create a new uh, ultra secure communication system, and 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 the European Commission is pushing for that to be in house, so to speak. You know built by Europeans for Europeans within Europe. And, and, and one could say that this is going against market, the market dynamics, one could say many things. Uh, there's protectionism and so on, but actually what it's, what it's going to do is, um, together with the right funding mechanisms and everything else, it's going to force European uh, companies to be more creative and, and, and get that development back in Europe. So I don't have a silver bullet, of course, um, but there are ways in which smart regulation, not over-regulation, as was alluded to earlier, uh, but smart regulation can push market actors in just the right way to, to make sure that everyone benefits and everyone can create. So, Samira, can I just add very quickly to that? And I think that um, I absolutely agree. And I think that you see that in the access sector by regulators making it possible for small local service providers to operate. We see that in countries like Mexico and Brazil um, that are licensing community networks to provide local access, often access that's more about just infrastructure. It's also about building content and building skill. So I think we should not underestimate the power of this creative enabling regulation to, to be transformational. I just feel often regulators are more concerned with control than enabling, but their capacity to enable is immense. Thank you, Mr. Son. You, 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 you make me making a little conclusion. So the idea uh, uh, why we are talking about post-globalization of economy. Because um, the idea for me as a representative of media, when I'm listening to your, uh, to your, to our panelists, which uh, each one have the, the, the in his, uh, in his position, have the, his, uh, his uh, side of view about what will be internet for people. You are talking uh, uh, about internet uh, as um, as something forbidden for other people and uh, the access for other because they are rich, they can have all the the, the um, all the, the the tools to 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 make their uh, way of working or uh, access to. To, to knowledge, uh, Mr. Gzuberek said that the problem is not uh, is not access to knowledge, but the problem is uh, is, is more deep than that. It's uh, not equality to, to 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 knowledge, but a new system of organization, a new system of regulation of internet. That the idea uh, he stressed on, but. Um, uh, my conclusion, if I can do one, and I, I give you then uh, the, the, the free speech, if you want to, to conclude with us, um, that uh, uh, in the vaccination campaign, uh, uh, we, we, we noticed it, 
uh, we observe that the importance uh, of, uh, uh, of a digital uh, revolution about making people to have the message on their mobile phone to, 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 to go to in the local level to go to vaccinate themselves because uh, uh, the campaign of vaccination uh, was unequal too for other peoples in, in, in some region to, to, to know the, to, to get the information because they have no access automatically to digitalization uh, tools. So uh, if you have to conclude, uh, uh, our post-globalization world, is it uh, possible without, today uh, without uh, regulation of, uh, of digital economy? The question, uh, you are free to, 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 to answer if you want, because uh, we, we noticed how important was uh, the role of uh, of, uh, of, new, of uh, uh, technology numeric uh, in the field of making technology uh, to, uh, to provide and to make uh, the, the, the society and the enterprise uh, more efficient in the way they, they, they could work in time of COVID-19. So uh, what, what uh, regulation means for all of you? One of one, uh, Renata, you go to well, uh, regulation uh, to me, it means uh, in this specific panel, unlocking public funds. And I think that uh, uh, one of the things that I, I forgot to mention that was very important is how procurement, how redefining the procurement rules can really unlock uh, opportunities for female creators, for local creators, for specific languages that are not served on the internet. For like, uh, It can be like really a tool for innovation, for inclusion. Uh, for local providers of education platforms, uh, for, uh, it opens possibilities and it's the duty of uh, public sector to regulate in that sense. So for me, regulation, the right kind of regulation, unlocks the power of uh, public funding, funding of our taxes to create uh, the technology we want in an inclusive way. In an inclusive way. Well, uh, Mr. Mark Williams? Regulation for you, what does, it, what does it mean? You think about the whole digital revolution globally, it's largely been driven by regulatory reforms. Um, the one exception to this, I would say, is the internet aspects, the internet that um, Gorin mentioned earlier on. But if we look at the underlying infrastructure, the telecoms and the digital infrastructure, it's been um, regulation which has driven that, which has unleashed private sector investment and, and competition. And so I think we need, to, but the, the, that, that regulatory environment is changing rapidly with the evolution of digital services. And so we need to make sure that regulation is focused on continuing that success in liberalizing markets and um, stimulating private investment and competition. We are talking about regulation of markets, making, making the market uh, uh, so you, you ask in a, in a way, uh, as uh, said, uh, as this is. Uh, uh, and we had said that you have uh, to, to, to call for the uh, intervention of the government. The government have to be more implicated in such process, perhaps, the idea, Mr. John Frank. The, uh, more implication of government in the process of uh, making a regulation of internet or... Uh, uh, of, of well, I think it's, a, I mean, just very briefly, I think it's incredibly important that the governance of the internet remain a multi-stakeholder project. Um, we, we don't want governments taking over the internet governance without the private sector, which is, owns and operates and has built the internet. I think that uh, the multi-stakeholder process is incredibly important, which is why the IGF is incredibly important. And so I think that we need to just ensure that we keep the, the appropriate roles that private sector, public sector, civil society working together, um, we're the ones who will shape uh, and should continue to shape the internet infrastructure that Goren's talked about um, and, and to recognize the private sector's important role uh, and the role of volunteers um, that have contributed so much. So uh, the role of uh, private sector, well, um, we can underline the idea that the PPP partnership and a kind of partnership between private sector and public, service, public sector, is it possible to regulate internet, Mr. Regoran? 
Sorry, idea can you repeat of the question? Frank. Sorry, I did. I have a little bit of the a idea question. of Mr. Mr. John Frank said the idea is to promote um, a, a kind of the, the role of a public sector in the, uh, in the in the numeric digital economy. What is uh, as a, a site of view on uh, regulation internet? What is your statement? I think that it's as as. as uh, uh, Mr. Frank talked about, I talked about earlier, you have to make a difference between the actual internet. Well, let's do a, just an experiment. Let's say that a region uh, like Europe decides to build, uh, you know, their own infrastructure of the internet because they think digital sovereignty. What they actually do then is splinter the internet. It will not be connected. But, and, and so what we're afraid of is that by having local regulations and you know, different technical solutions, you actually split out the internet. And when I wrote in the chat that internet is the big equalizer, if you get, you know, if you get, if you get poor people online, you get the same access to information as the rich people have had over time. And, and something magical just happens. And I think that when you look at many of those proposals and legislation, it's about content and hate speech and illegal Things. And I, you know, I'm, I'm privacy, and I think that's a very important thing to do. But please don't affect the underlying principles of the internet, the ones you're using to make this call, uh, the ability for people to connect. Because there is a tendency right now, I mean, for instance, we have not done everything right in our technical community. Right now, for instance, we're working hard to make sure that more people can access the internet technically on the, in their own language, their own script. Uh, people that don't read left from right don't know what a dot is. It's a major project uh, that involves many parts of the technical community to make that happen. And we see potential legislations that can actually have more business proposals that can have an effect on them. So we in the Western world can continue to have our internet uh, sort of working without giving technical access to people who doesn't speak English, who use Latin script, or be, read left from right. And so. And the one who's been the big enabler of making this happen is the multi-stakeholder model, which is not a fancy word for, for, for it, it, it's, it's actually people from all over the world coming together um, in, a, in almost a peace project. And many of the people who are in or has been involved in them. And the fact that these unsung heroes has been able to construct a system that is so safe, so secure, and so stable, that gives all of you the ability uh, to use the internet. It's been so successful. And I'm really afraid of regulation that is meant to do something else that hits this core of the internet. Thank you, Mr. Goran. Thank you, all of you. We go, we go on, on site with uh, Madame Marquette and uh, Mr. Xuver. Um, uh, we are talking, there is, no, there is no democracy without internet. There is no global economy market without internet since internet. Is a, is a big factor, so it's an element important of the economy global, the economy global that has already shown its limits. So we're going to conclude with Madame Henriette and Xuver. What kind of governance, so finally, I'm going to address it also to all the panelists, but we're going to return with Madame Henriette to Katwix. What kind of governance souhaitons-nous euh, euh, concrètement euh, euh, mettre en place pour pérenniser, voire redéfinir, euh, puisqu'on parle de, de, de collaboration secteur privé et secteur public, beaucoup ont insisté sur le rôle néolibéral de l'Internet et, et, et son rôle dans le, dans, dans le système démocratique. Euh, quel type de gouvernance souhaitons-nous pour pérenniser, voire redéfinir le contrat social, justement, ce contrat social qui lie tous les partenaires d'une société, travailleurs, cadres des entreprises, responsables des ressources humaines, décideurs politiques, agents économiques, euh, enfin d'imaginer ensemble une société plus équitable, plus inclusive, comme avait insisté Madame Renata au début de ce, de ce panel, euh, pour faciliter l'accès équitable aux nouvelles technologies, pour que ce ne soit pas euh, exclusivement du ressort des pays les plus riches, ou ceux qui s'accaparent la loi du marché, les lois du marché, et qui définissent justement quelles sont les entreprises qui décident de ce système démocratique finalement, puisque ce n'est pas si démocratique que ça. Internet, parfois, lorsqu'il est exclusivement confisqué par des États les plus riches. Madame Henriette. Euh, 
Um, Samira, I'm sorry, you know, they are telling us we need to end the session. We are over time. I'll just be very brief. I think um, um, we've heard already from John, from, from Joran, that we do need to have a multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance um, and, and internet regulation or regulation that affects the internet. So I think I would just add to that, that human rights remains an important check and balance for, for, for how we approach regulation. I think we also need to be able to learn from regulation and not assume that, that we have the solutions and interrogate whether regulatory intervention is achieving positive objectives or not, and really be very cautious about over-regulation. I think maintaining a collaborative, learning-oriented approach, and that's the role of the IGF. It is a way for us to come together as different stakeholders to challenge one another, but also to collaborate in using regulation in an empowering and enabling way rather than in a disabling um, way. Um, um, and, and because we are basically being kicked out on, uh, from the stage, I'm just going to add a couple of things. Um, I, I understand the point that made by John, I think, that local regulation leads to things like the, the splinter net and so on. Uh, but I would argue that a complete lack of regulation could also do that in the sense that one could, one could also have a situation where platforms grow so large that they, you know, if, if I don't participate on that platform, then that's it. I'm cut off from participating or communicating with 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 you know, 2 billion people. Uh, so so, so it, is, it is about regulation without over-regulation. It is finding that middle road there, which allows, uh, allows the smaller actors to compete with the, with the larger actors, even in the base in the absence of a functioning market, which in many cases is what we have at the moment. And that for me is the way to get underrepresented anyone on the internet, whether it's people as users, whether it's women entrepreneurs, whether it's uh, people struggling with uh, bias and AI data, you know, it's, it's everything. Every, everything requires um, working against the current market dynamic, uh, and that requires some modicum of, of, of regulation. But of course, without being uh, over-regulated, without, without, um, without losing sight of the, of the goal, I guess. So thank you uh, very much, all of the panelists. Uh, so the idea to conclude, because we have just one minute. Uh, thank you. Sorry if I was a little bit long in my intervention in French. Uh, so uh, the idea is, in conclusion, uh, over-regulation kills. Beaucoup de, beaucoup de régulation tue, mais sans régulation, il n'y a pas de démocratie, il n'y a pas d'Internet sans démocratie. Merci à vous tous, merci à tous les panélistes, euh, merci à, à, à ce débat qui était très, très profitable pour moi en tant que média. Et j'espère que, que l'avenir d'Internet, avec les metaverses, avec les blockchains, avec les, la loi du marché, avec le néolibéralisme à outrance, profitera aussi à tous les peuples de façon équitable pour un, un mieux-être numérique euh, réellement démocratique. Merci M. Goran, merci John Frank, merci Marc Williams, euh, merci Renata, merci Madame Ersusten, M. Zivert pour Belmalt, notre physicien, merci. Euh, et je vous souhaite bonne continuation pour le IGF Forum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.